in this introduction to S1 uh, we are going to talk about statistics and probability and that is the main uh, the actual name of S1 S1 is uh, it's called statistics paper 1 but the actual name of S1 this would be statistics and probability so it has topics on statistics and it has topics on probability and these two uh, combined to form the syllabus of S1 now statistics and probability these two uh, topics they are actually the most uh, the most impactful in our everyday life so there are many topics that might not affect us in our everyday life but statistics and probability is something that is very very important socially now statistics and probability they're actually related in that one can be understood as actually doing the opposite of the other in concept but they're in a way trying to do the same thing they're trying to give an idea about what might happen in the future and it's all about making a prediction about the future in both case of statistics and probability but how they go about doing it that's the question we all try to make a prediction uh, about how things can happen and an intuitive prediction might not always work as a matter of fact it can be very dangerous if that prediction is something very critical so it's not a good idea to make predictions based on what someone feels at least not in the uh, professional field so for that we have two tools statistics and probability now probability starts with the concept of it starts with the concept of we have an idea of a known population population we are not referring to as the human population by population we are referring to as the total amount of data that we have so it's starts with a known population and from that we try to find what's going to happen to a sample of that population so when we want to make a prediction we want to prediction make a prediction about the sample for example if you have you know that there are around 10 items and you know everything about that 10 items you know the entire population now from that you want to find out what is the chance of getting a small selection from that so population uh, probability is actually trying to find something smaller from what actually there is so if you have 10 items like this one two three and you have four five six so four seven eight and you have nine ten so you have ten items and out of ten items you want to know how many pink marbles there are so you're actually trying to find something smaller from the entire population that's what you're trying to do here so that's that's what we do in probability statistics on the other hand we do not know anything about the population what we do we know something about the sample so we start off with the sample starts with a sample which is a random selection from the population and we try to make a prediction about the population about the entire population so when we talk about statistics this is the prediction so if you know suppose you know you want to know how many people watch a particular television uh, television show now and and you you cannot actually ask every single person about that television show suppose there are millions of people who watch that show so how do we know that how many people watch that show so we actually ask a sample maybe 100 200 300 people randomly selected and from them we try to make a prediction okay fine if this out of this hundred people if 30 people watch the show so that means out of 100 200 300 million people this many people are going to watch this show so we start off with the sample and we try to talk about 
the entire population so that's the flip side of both statistics and probability now the S1 syllabus starts off with statistics in a number of steps when we do statistics we follow it in a number of steps so this is how the steps work out so the first thing the first topic in statistics that we have is we want to know the actual data so the first step of statistics is collecting the data that is the first topic collecting data so if you want to find out how many people was the television you have to collect the data regarding the sample so you have to collect the data that's the first step after you have collected the data the next step is you want to represent the data graphically and mathematically in such a way that it is easy to read that data and it, it's easy to understand that data so after you collect the data the next step is to represent the data graphically or mathematically somehow so that it is easy to organized way to take a look at the data and understand about the data now after that the next step is summarizing the data summarizing the data now when we summarize the data we are actually trying to use one single data to represent an entire data it's like if you have a team of 10 people and you want to talk to the team you cannot talk to uh, 10 or 11 people simultaneously there is a captain who represents the entire team and you talk to that captain who who is some sort of a representative of the entire team so that is summarizing the data we we use the center of the data uh, and using that so we have the center known as the central tendency and we have the gap from one data to another data which we called dispersion so when we want to summarize the data we want to know what is the center of the data the representative or the captain and we want to know the gap from the regular data from that special data date gap from one data to another data now after that the final step is predicting the data making a prediction about the data so when we want to make a prediction about the data we actually want to talk about the population so that's what we want to predict from this uh, the sample we want to make a prediction about what the entire population is going to do and this is broken down into two parts first is correlation we want to find out whether there is any relationship between two data sets and then there is regression which actually uh, gives a specific formula from which the prediction about the data can be made so these are the steps of statistics so these are in a, in a nutshell the steps of statistics now the next part of the S1 syllabus is probability so when we talk about probability the first thing that we talk about is the basic concept of probability so the basics of probability so the basics of probability so the basics of probability is how do we find a probability how do we manipulate uh, different probability so the basic concepts that's the first thing the next thing that we have is a concept on the one of the most uh, fundamental concept regarding uh, statistical probability is random variables so random variables so that's the next topic and we deal with random variables and probability distribution table it's a way of representing probabilities and finally we have a special type of uh, probability distribution it's called normal distribution so so these are the topics that we have to deal with in the s1 paper now I have made a mind map that denotes the entire S1 syllabus so let me show it so this is 
the S1 mind map. Now the first thing that we have to do, this, this portion is the statistics portion and this portion is the probability portion. So the first thing that we do is collecting data. So when we collect the data we have to know the concepts such as population and sample. Population means the entire data that we need to collect which we cannot do but we can collect a small selection of the population and then we make a prediction from the sample about the population and then there is two types of data data that can be counted discrete one two three four data that cannot be counted like height of a person it needs to be measured then data then we collect the data something that can be grouped or something that is not grouped for example continuous data needs to be grouped the height of a person is usually given by uh, three feet to two feet we don't know exactly what the height of a person because a person is maybe one inches more or one inch one inches less so it's that's how we group the data and then there is coding when you have a lot a big data for example 30 million 42 million 50 million instead of that million we just say 30 55 70 so that's called coding instead of saying the entire number shortening it for simplification so after data has been collected the next step is representing the data so in the syllabus the first thing you have to do is draw data the data that you just collect on paper by asking people question without any manipulation that's the raw data so after you take the raw data you represent it by ordering it from small value to larger value and then forming a table called frequency distribution table so that's called representation of the data and then we can further go into diagrams because diagrams are much easier to understand than tables so the diagram is a histogram and this is a diagram for data that is continuous and then we have stem leaf diagram a diagram for data that is discrete so you see we represent discrete and continuous data differently then we have box plot box plot can be uh, represent can represent both discrete and continuous data both and then after the data has been represented through pictures and diagrams the next step is summarizing the data we want there are so many data we want to calculate a data that represents the entire data for example there are 25 students in a class different people got different uh, percentage in their exam so if someone says what is the class performance then you need to represent one data that represents the entire class so that is that is summarizing the data and that is the center or the central tendency there are three types of central tendencies of the center these are called the averages mean average the mode average the median average remember when they say average all these three together are called the averages usually we tend to think mean means average but more than median are also average then there is the quartiles quartile is going even deeper than the center breaking it down even more and dispersion means breaking the data and seeing what is the gap between one data to another data for example when you talk about uh, the income of a country that is called the GDP of a country and suppose you have the income of a country that is very high the next thing to see is the gap between the rich and the poor that's called the Gini coefficient in economics and by looking at that we can know what is the gap between the rich and the poor so that's dispersion so uh, one measure of dispersion is standard deviation that is the main measure but there are also other measure like range and IQR called interquartile range range means the difference between the highest and the lowest interquartile range means the difference between the highest quartile and the lowest quartile this is how it works skewness it just gives how the data is distributed is it leaning towards something is it taking on a value more than the mean or less than the mean how is the data distributed that's what we know by skewness after the data has been summarized and we have a clear idea of what the data is all about then we go about predicting the main part of statistics the statistics where we from the sample we try to make a prediction about the population so how the population is going to behave so this can be broken down into two parts correlation uh, the full form the technical name of correlation is product moment correlation coefficient given by the symbol r pmcc so correlation says whether there is a relationship between two data now one thing is important to understand even if two data are correlated meaning one is affecting the other if one increases the other decreases or if one de increases the other uh, increases or decreases so when we have a correlation it doesn't necessarily mean that one thing is causing the other one
so suppose if you see that the selling of uh, the selling of cigarettes has increased and you have also seen that the selling of a chewing gum has increased so maybe because people are uh, smoking more cigarettes that's why they're buying more chewing gum this could be the reason but it can also be that it is absolutely there is no connection at all it just happens that for some mathematical re reason they're correlated or they're indirectly correlated so correlation does not mean one thing is causing the other thing it just means they are just correlated what we do after correlation is regression so in regression what we have to do is we have to make sure that what is the exact what is the exact prediction so it's like a formula so we have a formula where we have an equation like y equals to a plus bx like a linear equation and by putting the values of x one of the data we can find the value of the other one that's the uh, that's the equation so mathematically we can actually quantify and predict the data so this is the uh, statistics portion now this person this portion is the probability portion and the probability portion we have the basic probability the basic probability can be broken down questions given from directly evaluation question where there is no story or context needed and there is the question which is uh, more given something to do with the story to have an idea of what's going on in a real life situation and to find the probability of that you know probability here is just the opposite we know the entire population meaning the sample space from that we want to find the probability of a small event called the sample to happen now based on probability we have the random variable so random variable are uh, probabilistic data that we want to find what are the chances of that thing to occur so the random variable can be discrete meaning countable or it can be continuous so we have probability distribution and in our syllabus we have probability distribution is something like this like a frequency distribution which is about data and frequency how many times the data occur probability distribution is about random variable and probability so in our syllabus we have three types of probability distribution one with discrete random variable uh, two with discrete random variable general distribution and uniform distribution and the other one is continuous random variable probability distribution called the normal distribution so in this type of question they usually ask for the probability and then the expected value which is another name for the mean and the variance so it's like this one data summary central tendency and dispersion that's what we have to do so that's that's the entire s1 syllabus which covers the basic introduction to statistics and probability